let's continue talking about bedding plants and we'll talk a little bit about bedding plant scheduling. And uh, one of the challenges of scheduling a bedding plant crop is it's different every year. Easter changes things, the season changes things, and one of the most important things you can do for scheduling any crop is keeping good records. And one of the things I recommend that you all learn how to do is to write a diary. Keep a diary, keep a logbook, uh, put down what the weather's like, and uh, because oftentimes the weather patterns are going to require you to be a lot you know, flexible. If you have a lot of cloudy days during a production season, uh, it's going to cause problems. If it's rainy and cold, if especially if it's rainy and cold on the weekends, that ra backs things up in the greenhouse because people aren't coming out and shopping as much. Uh, and you can really only control a couple of things effectively in the greenhouse. And those things that you can control is the amount of time that your crop spends in that bedding plant plug tray or how much time that, that plant actually spends in the pack, the six pack, four pack, whatever you're growing. So um, if you're using a 606 cell pack, that means six packs with six cells per pack uh, in, in a standard 1020 tray, um, here are some production times for uh, standard impatience. On the left, we have uh, the seedling, where you're just growing a seedling in a flat, a bedding plant flat, full of media, and then you're, you're germinating it up, and it's going to be in there about just under two weeks. Uh, as a seedling, then you're going to transplant that seedling one at a time and put it into a, into a pack. You can see it's going to take almost 13 weeks to grow to a sellable size. So we're just taking that little seedling, pricking it out and transplanting it, putting it in the flat. And it's the, the shortest amount of time that it's in the tray, the germination tray, but it's the longest amount of time in the pack itself. Whereas we go into the plug production, which the other bar charts represent, um, you can see the total production time is just under 11 weeks. But there's a balance to those 11 weeks. If we're starting out with a plug that's eight, an 800 plug, which means 800 seedlings in a 10 by 20 tray, that's about the smallest plug that you can get. It's uh, only in that plug tray three weeks. And a three week time that is in that plug tray um, takes off takes the longest, is one of the shortest in the plug trays because it's very small, but it actually requires the longest time. Whereas we jump all the way over to the 288 plug tray, takes the longest amount of time, six weeks, almost a little more than six weeks in that plug tray, but it finishes the fastest. Uh, Question. Is that just because the plug is larger? Just um, because the plug is larger. It's a larger plug. It stays in that plug tray a longer time, therefore it takes longer time. Now here's the deal. If you grow your own plugs, this, the plugs are in a part of the greenhouse and this is the time frame that they're on the bench in that tray. If you buy your plugs from a specialty propagator, you're only concerned with the red. If you're a specialty plug grower, you're only concerned with the blue. Okay, red and blue. There's our politics right there. But <laughs> so this one over here on the far left, you're probably doing everything. Depending on the kind of production that you have, you could be doing both. And what you need to do is is think about the balance of how this all works in your in your production system. And there is data on all of these on just about every common seedling there is on the Ball website or Syngenta website, depending on what you're buying your seed and your plugs from, your growers, they all have these crop times and they all have these crop times based upon different crops. Now this is for a 606 cell pack. If you did like a 608 pack or six packs with eight cells per pack, it's going to change because you have now have a smaller cell. So everything Everything I'm going to show you right now is based on a 606, which is 36 plants for flat. So if you're programming your crop, which plug size is going to be best for the beginning of the season? So let's say we're starting the transplant in February, and we're not going to sell until March or so. Which one are you going to use at the beginning of the season? 
What do you think? What do you think? I'm sorry? The 288. Well, that's going to finish the fastest. So if it's early in the season, so if you're like transplanting in February, you're only going to be in the, you know. But that depends on where you're shipping to. You might be shipping to another part of the country where it's okay. Because remember, we're, these are for bedding plants that we're going to plant outside. So you're probably going to be using an 800 to extend your period. But if you only want to generate something fast, turn something fast, and you're thinking about fuel costs, you might go this way. Late in the season, you've got a couple of weeks to generate something, put something out on the bench just for a little bit of time. Which one are you going to choose? You're probably going to go to the 288 size so you can finish something fast and get it off the bench. Right? Sort of makes sense? But it's all based upon your, your production practice. So we use a, t a topic called a square foot week. And you've probably never heard this term before, unless you took greenhouse management. And we call it a square foot week. What is a square foot week? Well, first of all, it makes some assumptions. It's the number of square foots, square foots, square feet we have in our greenhouse that is available for a week of production. So a standard 1020 flat, remember it's 11 inches by 21 inches, occupies 1.69 square feet of bench space. Now, if a crop takes five weeks to finish, it's five weeks on the bench, during that five weeks it takes up 1.69 square feet, it's now going to require what we call 8.45 square foot weeks. Now this is a, this is a, this is a jump for some of you. All right, so we have a greenhouse, and in that greenhouse, if we have bench space of 3,000 square feet, pretty standard, 30 by 100 bench space, 3,000 square feet. Five weeks of production time, if we use that greenhouse for five weeks, those 3,000 square feet for five weeks, we have 15,000 square foot weeks. Is everybody with me? All right, see nodded heads. So five weeks, 3,000 square feet, this crop takes, eight, takes five weeks to finish, 15,000 divided by 8.45, means that we can finish 1,775 flats in five weeks. Right? Question. Do, doesn't that assume that um, our bench widths are such that um, they can accommodate um, that number of flats evenly? You don't have... Does it assume that it can accommodate that number of flats evenly? Exactly. We're assuming that we can put 3,000 square feet of flats into that greenhouse. That we can occupy that space. Now, that assumes how big your benches are. Benches are typically designed to accommodate full width of a flat. Not everybody builds their benches the same. Some people overlap their benches. Some people throw flats on the floor to increase their their their, their space, some people um, lap their flats, you know, there's all kinds of games people play to economize their bench space. But this just assumes that we're occupying that entire space. So I have posted on the, your supplemental reading material an article written by Will Healy um, on, call it, it's called Maximizing Your Bedding Plant Turns. And we're going to actually go through the problem set that's in there on how to use the square foot weeks to maximize your bench space. So I recommend you read it. It's only a three page article. There's a couple other articles that I put in there as well that talk about the same kind of thing. All right, so square foot weeks. Again, this is all for 606, uh, finishing for a 606 uh, cell pack. And this is for impatiens, petunias, and begonias. This is just generic impatience, generic petunias, generic begonias. 
plug sizes that they come in and that they're available for are 800 cells, 512s, 390s, 288s, and 144s. And these are the finishing times it takes post transplant to when you have a saleable product, assuming that you have the appropriate temperature, assuming that you got good light, assuming, assuming, assuming. So you can see that it goes from seven weeks from an 800 to three weeks for 144. Eight to four, eight to four for petunias and begonias. Pretty standard stuff. And like I said, all the seed companies have data books that you can get or online and everything like this that provides this information. For a thousand flats, this puts into our square foot weeks what it takes to finish each one of these. For instance, 811s, 800 plug size per impatience, 11,830 square foot weeks. This is for a thousand flats. Okay. You know, a thousand is 1.69 um, square feet. So you just take a thousand times 1.69, multiply it times the weeks, and that's where these numbers come from. Are you with me? I don't want to act like I, if, if, if you think I pulled a number out of the air, stop me. So 1.69 times 4 times 1,000 equals 6,070. That's these numbers right here. Okay? So you see where that number comes from. So let's do an example. Let's take an impatience. And we say we have 23,350 square foot weeks available for our crop. And that's uh, the benching seeks. And so we're going starting out at oh, week, uh, I think this set is set, starts out at week nine and goes through week, um, I can't remember exactly, it'll come up here in a minute. So we have 1.69 times one times 15,000 square feet of benches. That gives us 25,350 for one week. Okay? So, first turn. Now, we're looking at week 9 through week 26. Now, gro greenhouse growers start to think, start to take the calendar dates out of their brain and start thinking week numbers. Okay? Week 9 would be when? First part of March, right? Week 26 is? Middle of June, okay? So you need to start thinking week numbers. So we're gonna say our first turn, because I'm gonna try to do three turns in this greenhouse. I wanna do one turn, week nine through 15. In other words, week 15, I'm selling that crop, moving it out of my greenhouse, and I wanna start something else on week 16. Week 16, I'm giving myself four weeks, and on week 20, I want to move that crop out and I want to plan again for week 21 through 26. So a typical example in Colorado would be week 9 through 15. I'm going for that early production season. I might be shipping some stuff to Texas or someplace where it's a little bit warmer. 16 through 20, I'm going for my local market. Week 21 through 26, I'm looking for my market up in the mountains. Yes, so question. Grow at, like, at goalies or something. Okay. And you're not like, like, pretend it's not goalies and they're not. They're okay, so the question is, am I pretending like I'm shipping away? Well, even if you're at a local grower, you have a whole production side of your greenhouse and you have a retail side of your greenhouse. So I'm assuming that week 15, I'm taking this out of my production greenhouse and putting it into my retail space. Okay? Because I don't want. I don't want my, cu my retail customers coming into my production area because they may w decide they want to buy something that's not ready to sell. So think of that, or so I, I could either be taking it from my wholesale area to my retail area, or I could be taking it from my wholesale area and shipping it across town, or I could be shipping it to another vendor. So that's a good question. So 
9 through 15 is my first turn. And I'm going to buy 800, an 800 plug size. And that's going to use 11,830 square foot weeks to produce that over this uh, six week period. Okay? Now, this number here is calculated, this 25,350, this is calculated based upon week 9 through week 26. Okay? So, this number here, this is our checking account balance. Okay? That's what we got in our checking account. This is the easiest way to think about it. All right. So I moved this crop off. And I've got 13,520 square foot weeks left in my cropping season. So I take, and I'm going to go up to, this is my new turn. We're starting week 16. I ordered in 390 plugs. And that's going to take up 8,450. Take that out here. Now I have 5,070 square foot weeks left. Okay, I need to sell a shipment to the mountains. Because we, we actually have three season, three bedding plant seasons in Colorado. The big guys do. We have the big guys do an early season to ship south, a mid season to ship local, and a late season to ship to the mountains. Because Believe it or not, we get premium price for those late shipments to Vail, Breckenridge, Steamboat, places like that. Okay? All right. So, I'm getting ready for that. And I got a good deal on th this shipments at 390. And so they sent me 390. But to do that shipment, I still need the same square foot weeks. What have I done? By shipping three, getting the 390s in, because I got a good deal on that plug tray, I overdrew my account. I don't have that bench space. Now I'm scrambling for that bench space. I'm throwing plants on the floor, throwing plants wherever I can put them into the ventilation corridor, putting plants wherever I can, and I'm not generating a quality crop. So what do we do? Let's play with that a little bit. Maybe this is the problem. So let's change that to a 288. And my production balances. Make sense? So what this is, is trying to maximize and ensure that we're using our bench space the most efficiently through our cycle that we can maximize our bench space. Now this gets more complicated if we're growing Easter lilies and Easter is late, it gets more complicated when we try to bring in other crops. It gets more complicated when the vendors start messing with you on price points, saying, well, I can give you this tray for a cheaper price. Well, you need to look at your bench space. And this gives you a tool to calculate how to use your bench space more efficiently. So crop finishing times for 606 flats in weeks, so just an example, um, age geranium, uh, the 800s, you know, we're looking at eight weeks for most things, except for things like Celosia and Coleus. These are seedlings. Go to the 406 trays, 288s. Um, here you can tell the 288s, they don't even sell them in a 288. Um, different um, plug sizes, and this is just some data that, that you can pull off and, and find in most of the books. And you can use these numbers to project and program your crop, because the goal is to make sure that you want to always keep your flat, your, your greenhouse full. You know, I, don't, I haven't done a calculation on this in a long time, but you're usually getting b between 10 and $12 per square foot per turn. So if you're selling a, a, a 1.69 cell flat uh, for, let's see, $7, $7.50 $7 wholesale up to $12 wholesale, you can pretty much automatically figure how much 
what your gross value is going to be for that crop. Okay? And some more. Snapdragon, Verbena, Vinca, Xenia. And this data is rich, available from um, uh, Richard Steyer and Dave Koransky. They published this data uh, 1997 and they're constantly updating this data so this is all uh, pretty much open data